to Daniel. So check this out. We'll be here in just a second. But uh, two weeks from tonight, we are starting a new book, Book of Daniel. I'm excited about it. And, um, and I'm already looking forward. If the Lord doesn't return or come for us anytime soon, we get through the book of Daniel, I'm already looking forward to the next book after that. If not, we'll be in heaven, and that would be even more glorious. But I'm really looking forward to starting the book of Daniel. People have a lot of questions about Daniel. And uh, man, Daniel gives us insight that you don't find anywhere else in the entire Bible. It's a Jewish book uh, to the Jewish people in their day. And uh, it's going to be fantastic. So that is two weeks from tonight. Harry Walker next Sunday night. But for right now, let's you and I uh, get ready for this. I do believe the time is at hand. And uh, I'm hoping Jesus comes at least by tomorrow. Lord, we thank you for the uh, opportunity to worship and praise you and to be in your word. And I pray that you bless our time together as we look at your prophetic word. We thank you. We love you because you first loved us. And it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. The time is at hand. What time is it? Well, let's look at a couple of things. Matthew chapter 24, we'll use that as a, as a jumping, uh, a place to jump off from. But Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's talking to them in Matthew chapter 24 from the Mount of Olives in the days of Jesus. It uh, would not have been this gold dome that would be uh, the, the disciples would see. In the background, it would be the temple in Jerusalem. There's going to be a temple there again. We'll get to that in the end. But I, if you've been to Israel, how many of you have been to Israel? That's not a lot. Listen, I want to encourage you, go to Israel. Our trip in October, anybody want to go with us? It's full. You can't go. But we have, we have more trips. We have two more trips that are coming up that you can go on. Listen, go to Israel. The Bible will come to life in a way. It's like you go from black and white to full color, HD, 4K, surround sound, everything. It, the, the, what you suddenly connect with things. And, and when we were there just in June, we're on the Mount of Olives, and I'm standing there, and the group is here, and, um, and they are, so they're looking over my shoulder at that, what you see right there. And uh, we went through a little bit of Matthew 24. It's not a real exhaustive message at, at a place like that. But I said, imagine Jesus talking, giving this message, and over his shoulder, they see the temple. And Jesus is talking about how the temple is going to be destroyed, and that was in 70 AD. And they don't understand these things Jesus is talking about. And then they say to him, verse 3, Matthew 24, as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be? When is the temple going to be destroyed? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? In other words, when are you coming again? And what's the sign for the end of the age? They only wanted one sign. Jesus proceeded to give them several signs. I've mentioned this here before many times. There's over 800 signs in the Bible regarding the second coming of Christ. Jesus gives us a lot in Matthew 24, uh, Luke 21, Mark 13, the area known as the Olivet Discourse. Hence, sitting on the Mount of Olives, uh, Jesus teaching his disciples. There's several signs there, but 800 signs in the Bible regarding the second coming of Jesus. God wants us to know. Jesus answers and he says to them, verse 4, Take heed that no one deceives you. So deception is one big sign. Now, we live in a day of deception, fake news, all that kind of stuff. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will, de it will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. In other words, there's always been wars, there's always been rumors of wars, um, but that's not the sign. Just because there's a war or rumor of war, that is not the sign. These things always must be. For nation will rise against nation. In other words, people group against people group. The word nation is ethnos. We get our English word ethnic group from that. Uh, for uh, people group will rise against people group and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That term beginning of sorrows, you know this if you've been here. It's likened to birth pains upon a pregnant woman. So the closer you get to these days, Jesus is saying, the wars and rumors of wars, 
they're going to escalate enormously. There's always wars and rumors of wars, but in that day, they will escalate like a woman that's about ready to give birth. Her belly's going to grow much larger. Her birth pangs are going to increase in frequency and intensity, and then the baby's going to be born in much travail. That's what Jesus is saying. So when you see all of these things escalating like this, increasing in frequency and intensity, like a baby that's about ready to born, be born, that's when you know that it is about to happen. But he's talking about all of these different signs. Pestilence, famines, earthquakes, wars. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and hate one another. And then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. We have that now. Lawlessness is abounding on the streets, in the courts, the judges, in Congress. It's, it's abounding everywhere. And the love of many is growing cold. You, you look at what people are willing to kill for. It's just uh, appalling to see. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Let me stop here for a second. People ask me all the time about this verse, verse 14, the gospel will be preached to all the nations, and then the end will come. They will tell me, well, Pastor Tom, you're wrong about Bible prophecy because there's still a lot of languages where the Bible has not been uh, interpreted and then translated into that particular language. So, we are decades, maybe even centuries away from Jesus returning because the Bible needs to be translated and given to all these nations. That's not the case. This passage is fulfilled, 24 verse 14, is fulfilled during the tribulation period. Remember what happens? There's 144,000 Jewish men, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel that come to faith in the Lord, and they are out in the world proclaiming the gospel like the Apostle Paul. Um, at, when he was converted, the blinders were on him. He's on the road to Damascus. The Lord gets a hold of him. The blinders come off. He suddenly can spiritually see. The Bible tells us blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the time of the Gentiles has come. Then those blinders are taken off. 144,000 Apostle Pauls preaching the gospel. Can you re imagine that? That's going to happen during the tribulation period. An angel that goes to the four corners of the earth proclaiming the gospel to every tribe, nation, tongue. Everyone throughout the entire planet is hearing the gospel. And you have the two witnesses, some say Moses and Elijah, who have returned, and they will be in Jerusalem proclaiming the gospel. So that's going to be fulfilled during the tribulation period. It says, then I'm going to return. Verse 15, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, Whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down or take anything out. Let him who is in the field not go back or get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. The abomination of, Dan, uh, of desolation that Daniel the prophet wrote about is that thing that is coming. Uh, in the tribulation period, there's going to be a temple that's going to be built in Jerusalem. Again, that will be at the very end tonight. There will be a temple that's going to be built. The Antichrist will sit in that temple, demand to be worshipped as God. The Jews are going to wake up at that point and realize, wait a minute, this guy is an imposter, and they're going to flee to the mountains, many believe Petra. So that's what that is about. They are fleeing at that moment. They're going, wait a minute, uh, this, is, this is the wrong guy. This, guy. this guy is bad news. Jump down to... Uh, Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give us light. The stars will fall from the heaven. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And that's the place in Zechariah chapter 10 where they look upon him whom they have pierced and they will see him and we are coming with him. At that place where he defeats the Antichrist, and the false prophet there cast into the lake of fire at, at Megiddo. And then he goes and rules and reigns uh, from Jerusalem. He's going to step on the temple, uh, on the, um, the Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives is going to split in two. That's also spoken of in the Old Testament. So you have all these things. All these things Jesus is referring to, you can, date, you can find 
links to in the Old Testament for the prophecies being fulfilled. He will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, verse 31, and they will gather together as elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Verse 32, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. In other words, my word is good. I'm telling you, it's all going to happen. You will see all of these things happening. Verse 33, you know that it is even at the doors. This generation won't pass away. I look at this and I go, man, this is just off the charts cool. Crazy, too. In Amos chapter 3, the Bible says this. The prophet Amos wrote, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Again, the Lord God does nothing unless he first speaks it through his prophets. We have the prophetic word. Um, Daniel says, I don't think I have enough time to read it tonight, but Daniel says in Daniel chapter 12, when Daniel is wondering, and uh, Michael the archangel stands up, and, he's, and Daniel's seen this vision about this tribulation that's coming to his people, that'd be the Jewish people. He sees what's going on. He asks the angel for an understanding of what in the world is going on. I don't get what I'm seeing. Uh, this looks good, but it also looks really bad. And the angel says, Daniel, here's the deal. Shut up and seal up the words of the book. It's not for you to understand. You are not going to get it. But in the end, those people will get it. It will be unsealed in that time. I believe we live in that time. And then the angel said this to Daniel. The wicked will see what is going on in the world. They will not connect the spiritual dots. They're not going to connect the dots to the book. The wicked will see it. They won't get it. They will not understand, and they will continue in their wickedness. That's what we see happening in the world. People say, well, something weird is going on, but no connection, right? That's a lot in the church, too, by the way. It's kind of concerning. But then Daniel goes on, the angel tells him, but the wise will see it, and they will understand. So there's that generation. They're going to see these signs. Jesus said, behold, when you see these things taking place, behold, I am at the doors. According to Daniel, there's a time when the generation, the, the, a generation that lives, the words, the prophetic words will be unsealed. The wise will understand. They're going to get it. Amos wrote that God does nothing unless he reveals it through his prophets first. Folks, he's revealing it. God is shouting it to, uh, to anyone who will listen. This is what is going on. Over 800 signs regarding the second coming of Christ. And folks, it appears that all of them are happening right now. By, by the way, the medieval kingdom when they have their ultimate fulfillment, like uh, the, the Israel and uh, the, the, the uh, produce that Israel is going to develop and the, the fruit that Israel is going to develop and all of these different things. A lot of these prophetic passages have their ultimate fulfillment in the millennial kingdom, but we're watching them in their beginning stages right now. I'm saying, if we're watching them in their beginning stages right now, that must mean Jesus is coming really, really soon. And then this one passage, and then we'll start looking at this. In Isaiah chapter 46, God says this. <clears throat> that he declares the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done. And he says, my counsel will stand. I will do all my pleasure. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. God is talking about the things that are going to happen, declaring the end from the beginning. Now, in other words, all the way back here, he said, this is how it's going to happen. I declared it. I will make sure I will bring it to pass. You better believe it. Listen to me, you stubborn-hearted, who are far from righteousness. 
I bring my righteousness near, it shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. I, I love that. Are we going to get in Zion in just a few minutes too? But I look at this world, and so much of the world has now got into this not just anti-Semitic movement, but anti-Zionist movement. And, and uh, they'll look at me, they'll look at probably most of you and say, hey, you're a Zionist. If you're a Jew who believes Israel has a right to uh, the land that they, they have, um, they'll say you're, you're just a Zionist, just Jewish Zionist. If you're like me, they'll label you as a Christian Zionist, and therefore you're a racist. Zionism is now compared to racism. Listen, God is the original Zionist. God says it here. The Israel, for Israel my glory, and I will place salvation in Zion. Zion is his. The land of Israel is his. It is the apple of his eye. So with that as an understanding, uh, let's start to look at this, all right? Okay, so this is what, what Jesus said. Oh, oops, I forgot about that. I'm going to show you some of the nutty things that are going on. I just had to do just this one um, because there are a lot more in a few more minutes. Manholes are out as Berkeley removes gender-specific language from city code. Is that nuts? I mean, this whole, this world has gone mad. You look at that and you go, Jiminy Crickets. I mean, what? It, I mean, what? Oh, anyways, I just wanted to show you some of the nutty things. All right. I, I, I mean, it's just, every day, it's hard to believe, but it's not hard to believe anymore, is it? You're like, yeah. So, Okay, in, in uh, Matthew chapter 24, there is, Craig, there's a buzzing up here. There. Uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus was speaking to his apostles about a specific time in the future. In the passage that we read, he was answering a question that the, the disciples had regarding when will Jesus return. Jesus gave specific signs to look for. The signs Jesus gave will be observable by a certain people. I believe that's us. The signs Jesus gave will be observable at a specific time. I believe it's now. And only going to increase then specifically for the tribulation period. Uh, the signs Jesus gave will have their culmination all within the same time frame as the generation of the people of the last days. Uh, the signs Jesus gave alert anyone in that specific generation to his soon coming. That was his purpose of saying these things. That's the purpose. There's my, I'm still in puberty, so sometimes these things happen. Um, the relevance of the signs is dependent upon the Jew being back in the land called Israel at a time when they also possess uh, the city of Jerusalem. I'm not going to set a date, but I think we'll see some really interesting things in the next few minutes. But remember again, Jesus said, when you see all these things, know that it is near it is even at the doors. Jesus is letting anyone know that will pay attention. When you see, he's telling us to look. And so often we're told, don't look at the prophetic word. We're told to look. Old Testament, New Testament, look, 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 watch, be ready. How many more signs do you want me to give you? How obvious can I make it? Man, you better be ready. But he also says, when you see all of these things, talking about all these things converging at the same time again, when the Jews are back in the land and they possess the city of Jerusalem, which they do. And more and more Jews are making their aliyah to, uh, to Israel every day. Um, the term convergence is what Jesus is referring to when you see all these things happening at the same time, converging. It means to, uh, to meet or come together to form a crowd or a group, to come together and have one interest, one purpose, or one goal. The purpose... These things converging, therefore, of the prophetic signs converging is to let us know that Jesus is coming. So, with that, what I would like to do is just look at some of the, some of the things that are going on. We certainly aren't going to look at 800. We're probably going to look at about 10 or something like that. So, the first one is this. Uh, this is kind of a generic one. Earthquakes. Um, Jesus said in Matthew 24, we just read it, that the earthquakes will increase. Uh, this article says, number of global earthquakes three times above the normal. Now, I don't put all my stock in the increase of earthquakes. I was born in Los Angeles. I've never lived outside of Southern California. 
earthquakes happen. In fact, it seems to me that when I was a kid, we have seen lar- this is from a couple days ago, we've seen large earthquakes going off like firecrackers all along the ring of fire. Uh, a 6.1 quake hit Japan, 6.6 just hit Australia, 7.3 uh, just hit Indonesia. And of course, all of this comes about a week or so after Southern California was hit by two of the largest earthquakes it has experienced in more than two decades. Uh, so is all of this shaking unusual? Just a few moments ago, the writer says, I pulled up the most recent data from Earthquake Track, and what I discovered is more than just a little bit alarming. Uh, looking at the entire globe, we have averaged 193 earthquakes of magnitude 1.5 or greater per day uh, so far in 2019. 1.5 is really, really tiny. I think you guys know that. It's not uncommon. There's earthquakes all the time that go off that are real small, but there's 193 per day so far in 2019. He writes this very high, but it pales in comparison to what we have witnessed over the last week. Within the last seven days, again, this was written a few days ago, our planet has experienced an average of more than 677 per day. That means that the number of total uh, gl- of global earthquakes right now is more than three times above the normal. So you look at that. I don't put all my lock, stock, and barrel into earthquakes. Uh, what I know about earthquakes, it reminds me of the one who's doing the shaking. The whole world is in his hands. But also when I see something like this, it's just a reminder that Jesus us that one of the things that will happen is earthquakes will increase like frequency and intensity like birth pains upon a woman that's about ready to give birth. So it's, it's something that alerts me. It says, aha. Now if it was only that... And say, I forget it. You know, it's just earthquakes. But there's a lot more. Um, uh, We have the New World Order, or uh, uh, I guess you could say Deep State. Uh, So this is going to start getting more interesting over the next few minutes. We hear about Deep State. Everybody used to say all this Deep State stuff. That's just a bunch of hogwash. That's just a bunch of conspiracy talk. But you start looking at it, and you're going, well, wait a minute. Now, everybody's talking about Deep State. Even... Elected officials talk about deep state, and they realize, listen, this isn't all conspiracy talk. I do know, and you know if you study Bible prophecy, that because the Bible tells us Revelation 13, Revelation 17, uh, Daniel talks about it also. There is going to be a global government in the last days, and it's going to be run by this person who's going to sit at the top, this one that we would call the Antichrist. And it fits the description, biblically, of what many call deep state. But with this whole deep state thing, uh, think of this. Ted Cruz says, uh, Google uses monopoly powers to silence voices they don't like. There's a particular narrative about the global agenda. And it seems if you're not on uh, the correct side, uh, in fact, if you're on the right side, you're probably going to get shut down. Um, If you're not on their correct side, you're you're, you're going to be uh, silenced. Um, Colorado State University. How many of you heard of this? Avoid using the word America because it's not inclusive. You know, so just some more. So it's not just California and Berkeley. You know, this weird stuff is happening all over the place. What else do we have? Um, Political correctness. You know, that kind of thing. George Orwell's 1984. Big Brother. It's deep state. It's all that the Bible prophesied in the last days these things would be. Corporate astronaut. How billionaires are joining the space race. Uh, now, this, the reason I brought this up is because it appears there's so much money involved these, these, uh, out of uh, Silicon Valley and, uh, that um, they've got more power than most of the governments in the world. And the, there's a real concern now that the government will not be able to stop them. And so you start to see... Well, it used to be NASA that was pouring money into uh, the space exploration, but these guys have more money than most governments have. Individuals do, but they're able to fund all kinds of uh, research and development for the tech industry, too, which will lead us to the next thing in just a, in just a few more minutes. Um, then there's this former Obama c- uh, cybersecurity chief says, Thiel, that's Peter Thiel, is correct to call out Google's China ties. Who's Peter Thiel? He's the founder of uh, PayPal, and he's saying, hey, Google's got some issues uh, going on uh, that you need to be aware of. Ex-White House cybersecurity chef says Peter Thiel's right to call out Google for working with China. Um, 
Here's what I think is true. A Google refused to work for the Pentagon on artificial intelligence, and it works on artificial intelligence in China, says Richard Clark. There's no difference between Chinese companies and the Chinese government, says Clark, who advised both GOP and Democratic presidents. Clark is responding to Peter Thiel urging the FBI and the CIA to investigate whether Google has been infiltrated by Chinese intelligence. When, when you look at this, you have Peter Thiel, you have Obama's former security, uh, uh, cybersecurity chief saying, we have a huge problem in the American government that ought to have every one of you alarmed. Uh, this is a big wig from Silicon Valley and a big wig in Obama administration saying, eh, 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 we have an alert. What's happening in China? Is the United States, is, is Google working with China for their cybersecurity things to track all the people and do whatever they want, but refusing to work with the United States? That's alarming. That shows us that if this is true, which it appears it probably is, that shows us that, uh, that, that our country is being sold out by these giant corporations. And you look at this, and also if you follow what's happening in China, China has their massive social credit system, which I'm not going to get into tonight because I've talked about it so many times in the past, but the people are controlled on buying and selling already in China. They don't have an official mark of the beast yet, but they've got a social credit system that's in place that's the envy of every dictator that's out there to control the masses of the people in, in, the, in each of their nations. Okay, let's check this out couple more things about Deep State. Uh, Britt Gillette, he's a, a writer that, that I follow, uh, was quoted in this article called A Deeper Understanding of Deep State's Doings. Britt Gillette has written perhaps the best piece I've read on the globalist madness. He writes correctly that we are in a time of backlash against the never-ending assault on national sovereignty. However, that assault bores full speed ahead. Gillette indicates that the fact is that the millennial generation will provide the overwhelming basis for the globalists ultimately accomplishing the satanic mission. Gillette believes the basis for his conclusion, the millennials embrace, number one, freedom of movement, that'd be open borders, two, climate change, which millennials believe is the greatest fear, three, global government. Millennials trust in strong central government to provide uh, the for the masses of the people, the surveys show. So you look at that and you go, man, uh, the, the bigger the government, the more frightened I think we ought to be. Current voters may reject the globalist agenda, but according to several surveys, future voters don't. Globally, the millennials, those be born between 1981 and 96, outnumber both the baby boomers and Generation X, and they believe the concept of being a citizen of a single country is outdated, to them, global citizenship is the way of the future. While recent political developments show a backlash against globalism, all they've done is slow the inevitable march toward global government. Why all this matters, he asks? So why should you care? You should care because we're on the cusp of a new era. Ever since the Tower of Babel, you know the Tower of Babel, uh, Book of Genesis, Right? Ever since Tower of Babel, people have been trying to have a one-world government. Uh, tribes and nation-states have governed the world. Nations meant well-defined borders, innate language, and culture. Many people dreamed of global government, but that's all it was, a dream. Such a government would never work in reality. Local interests and values would triumph. And administering a global government would be an expensive bureaucratic nightmare. But this generation is tearing down all obstacles to global government. I look at that and I think, man, and then thinking of the control, the global government, political correctness, the whole 1984, big brother, controlling what people can say, controlling where people can live, buying and selling, all of that. Think of this. In January 2019, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres directed one of his advisors to develop a plan to combat hate speech and hate crimes. The plan was presented to the UN in June, that'd be just last month, and it wants to globally outlaw all speech, writing, and behavior that is divisive or intolerant. What do you think is divisive and intolerant speech? 
all speech, writing, and behavior that criticizes Muslims and gays and etc. So you're looking at this. So this is the direction these things are going, all right? So this is going to get more interesting, trust me. Uh, let's think of the mark of the beast. So what do we have? We have a video. It's about four minutes long, and we'll shut off the lights, and I want you to check out this video. In a presentation for the Zurich Minds Conference, Professor Raffaello D'Andrea demonstrates the amazing capability of drones that can communicate with each other. Technology, he admits, could be used to abuse populations and is, quote, incredibly dangerous. The most impressive part of the demonstration shows the drones working together to intercept an object. For this last demonstration, which we call the Skynet, we're going to use these three vehicles to do something cooperatively. What they're going to do is they are going to propel a ball in the air and then move to intercept it. This is a nice demonstration of various aspects from control theory. The first is optimal control to figure out the optimal way for them to throw the ball up in the air uh, um, subject to their constraints. The second is feedback control about these trajectories. And the third is replanning to move to intercept the ball. Okay. See, it's definitely worth waiting for. Okay, so the things that I want, to, I want you to appreciate when you see this is that these vehicles are basically vertical when they're fully extended. The other thing to notice or to note is that the forces that are applied to it are on the order of magnitude larger than the forces that the vehicles can apply themselves. So it's like somebody yanking you with thousands of pounds of force. And they have to be able to coordinate their actions to not only throw the ball up in the air, but then move to intercept it. This is an extremely dynamic task with a lot of uncertainty with very fast dynamics. Yet, this technique for designing control systems is very robust, and that's why the system works. Earlier this month, we reported on the development of a drone that mimics the behavior of eagles to snatch stationary objects off the ground, a capability technology experts fear could one day be used to literally abduct protesters and other suspects off the street. We also highlighted how a mind meld study funded by DARPA was successful in fusing the brains of rats, a technology the Pentagon one day hopes to bring to legions of battlefield robots. Writing about the Skynet communicative drones, aviation expert David Senciotti expects the drones demonstrated by Professor D'Andrea to be used for hunting terrorists and other, quote, homeland security purposes. Just imagine the same behaviour in those drones which provide homeland security circling over your house or hunting terrorists in theatre. Even if pilots will still be sitting inside a ground control station to guide them, they will be able to make fast, autonomous, efficient, cooperative decisions removing the possibility of human error and slow reaction time. Nice, until they gain self-awareness requiring a John Connor to save us all. And of course, Skynet was the artificially intelligent computer system featured in the Terminator franchise of movies, operated by these armies of cyborgs whose goal it was to exterminate the human race. So that's the little cute name that they've given this new fleet of intelligent communicative drones. And during his presentation, Professor D'Andrea had his own warning about the threat of the technology being misused. Okay, and my last note is that it's also incredibly dangerous, okay? We're creating some pretty powerful stuff here. And it should be clear that it can, that it can be misused and it can be abused, okay? The things that you could do with these types of machines is, is a little bit terrifying. Subscribe to the channel below and also check out prisonplanet.tv. This is Paul Joseph Watson reporting for InfoWars. So, you know, you look at that video 
And, and this is where technology is. And these are things that we just hear about. But when you start to look at what the Bible talks about, how no one can buy or sell Revelation chapter 13 unless they receive the mark of the beast. Um, you, you look at how, how far advanced uh, technology is. You have this Elon Musk. Um, his brain interface company, Neuralink, is to make a big announcement. Initially, Neuralink's goal was to figure out how brain interfaces could help alleviate chronic pain for those suffering from chronic uh, mental conditions. But the overall consensus that MIT technology did uh, regarding this is that the overall consensus from tech outlets is that the corporation is getting close to connecting the human brain to computers, possibly using computer chipsets to wire, wirelessly send brain data to AI or even as a way to send signals back to the brain. And you look at that and you think that this is... So we have the technology. Uh, the databases are already there. All of our data is already being collected, being able to manipulate the people where they can buy and sell. We have Agenda uh, 2030, which has on its books a goal to control the wetlands which, uh, and other things that we have. So, in other words, you can be told where you can and you can't live. And you start to look at the environmental laws that are written that the UN wants to implement that Trump did get us out of with the Paris Climate Accord. And you realize that, you realize, wow, all of these things, as much as Agenda 2030 and Agenda 21 and that kind of thing sound like a conspiracy, these are real things that the UN is attempting to implement uh, Trump got in the way of that, and, uh, but Revelation 13, Revelation 17, Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 8, Daniel chapter 2, all talk about these things happening in the last days at a time when all of the signs are taking place at the same time. And then there's this, thousands getting implants enhanced to replace cash and credit cards. Now you've heard about this before coming out of Sweden, but this is just remarkable because it's only increasing. More than 4,000 people have already had the sci-fi-like chips about the size of a grain of rice inserted into their hands, with the pioneers predicting millions will soon join them as they hope to make it global. It's very black. Mere Swedish scientist uh, Ben Liberton told the post of the similarity to the TV series highlighting futuristic scenarios. Like glorified smartwatches, the chips help Swedes monitor their health and even replace key cards to allow them to enter offices and buildings. They have, and this gets interesting, particularly caught on, however, by enabling owners to pay in stores with a simple swipe of the hand. <laughs> a big deal in a forward-looking country that is moving towards eliminating cash. It, it, it's, it's going to happen. And um, I love cashless. And I know that bothers people watching the Internet right now. But I, I don't want to have to carry a bunch of stuff around. And when I go to a gas station, I don't want to have to go in there and pay. To me, it's totally annoying. I want to go up to the pump and just be able to get my gas. When I go to Starbucks or a coffee shop, I don't want to have to deal with cash. I don't even want to have to deal with a card. I prefer to use my phone whenever I can. And, and I'm not alone. And some of you are appalled thinking I've given in to the mark of the beast. No, I haven't. I just realized the advantage of technology, which is how this type of thing is going to be sold because people love it. it, it it's, it's got such ease to it. You like it. And I haven't gone over to the dark side, and I'll be raptured, and I'm not worried about it. But, but by the way, when you receive a, the mark of the beast, because this question comes to me a lot, um, all this technology, have I already received the mark of the beast if I've been implanted with a chip and so forth? No. Uh, the mark of the beast is specific to a time when people have a decision to make, to worship the Antichrist or to reject him. So it's not just about technology. It's not just about the ease of buying things. It's specific to worshiping the Antichrist. And uh, I don't plan to be around here for that, so praise the Lord, because I do worship Yeshua. But then you've heard about uh, Libra, right? Um, Facebook's global uh, currency. Everybody heard about that? Only a few of you? Well, this will be news to you. I figure by now everybody knew it. Damon Duck reports about on June 25, uh, 2019, regarding Libra, the global currency that Facebook wants to implement. On June 25, so just last month, Steve Forbes, a two-time candidate for Republican nomination for 
a president of the U.S. posted an open letter to Mark Zuckerberg on his website. Forbes believes Zuckerberg can create a global currency to replace the U.S. dollar if he plays his cards right. And Forbes told Zuckerberg four things he wanted him to know. Link, excuse me, link your global currency to gold. There have been other currencies that were successful because they were linked to gold. A global currency linked to gold would be the most desirable currency on earth. Call the currency the mark instead of the libra. I'm thinking, well, that's weird. He writes, the mark of the beast is one thing, writes Damon Duck, and one world currency called the mark is another. But prophecy teachers have been linking the mark of the beast, tracking all buying and selling and a one world currency together for years. I find it interesting that Steve Forbes says, hey, call your new currency the mark. I don't know, I just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. A few weeks ago, World Net Daily reported that about 30 public interest groups have asked Congress to permanently or temporarily stop Facebook from creating a global currency. According to these groups, a global currency will impact the sovereignty of nations. It will impact every person on earth. There will be privacy issues, corporate power issues, government control issues, money laundering issues, the role of the IMF, uh, and so forth. They believe it is dangerous for the U.S. to let Facebook create a global currency that will impact our national sovereignty and all of our citizens without any discussion in Congress. Uh, it's like Congress is going to solve anything. Uh, Facebook is establishing a group of corporations called the Libra Association to manage the currency. The Libra Association will be, a, will be located in Switzerland because of that nation's supposed global neutrality. Facebook plans to issue its global currency in about a dozen nations in early 2020. A global currency in 12 nations less than a year from now. I mean, you start thinking about this thing, Facebook, the kind of currency it's going to be. Now listen to this. This week, President Trump and Jerome Powell, head of the Federal Reserve, chimed in on this subject. Mr. Trump tweeted, writes Duck, if Facebook and other companies want to become a bank, they must seek a new banking charter and become subject to all banking regulations, just like other banks, both national and international. Mr. Powell said America's central bank has serious concerns about Mr. Zuckerberg's one world concern, concurrency. Uh, one world, what did I say? Is that a word? Well, it is now. It's, it's, a, it's a long version of currency. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg's one world currency. Uh, notice that discussion of a one world currency has now moved from the pages of books on the Bible to tweets at the White House and Federal Reserve testimony before the U.S. House of Representatives. And you look at that and you think, uh, this stuff is just pretty wild when you start putting it together. Yet the Bible told us these things. This, do you realize this is only how many things? Let's see, one, two, three. Number four, there's only four things. You look at there's over 800 in the Bible regarding the second coming of Christ, and they all are converging right now. Uh, next one is pestilence. I'll make this one quick. A uh, world is at risk of Ebola, plane plague spreading on flights. Have you heard about this? It's Ebola stuff. People think these things are gone. They, they are not gone. Ebola outbreak spreads to new city where million people live. Uh, California's homeless crisis has reached epic proportions, which has led, this is a repeat, uh, something do, uh, Dr. Drew said not too long ago, Dr. Drew warns of imminent bubonic plague outbreak starting in Los Angeles. So Jesus said another one of the signs of his coming is going to be pestilence increasing like uh, birth pains upon a pregnant woman. And you look at this, this Ebola thing is a big deal, but it's not just Ebola. It's all these different things that you keep reading about in, from the CDC, Center for Disease Control, and other outlets, and you're reading about these things that are increasing. Uh, I read about MRSA's all the time. One of the most dangerous places you can go is a hospital. But you have to go to a hospital for surgery and so forth. I was talking with somebody the other day, and they, they went in for surgery, and they said they had to get, uh, uh, he had to get his wife out of the hospital ASAP, the hospital insisted on it, not for insurance reasons, but because of MRSA reasons. She went in there because she had an infection. They treated her, and they said, get out of here with all of these medications. We can't have this floating around the hospital. So we're watching these things, and as advanced as we are, 
there's a whole lot of things we don't have any control of, and according to the Bible, it will increase. In fact, in Revelation chapter 6, in the beginning of the tribulation period, when the black horse appears, it is pestilence that just destroys so many people in the world, and that would include the civilized world. Uh, next one is Iran. Has anybody heard about any problems with Iran? <laughs> Iran admits seizure of foreign tanker, 12 crew members in Strait of Hormuz. Iran State Television said Thursday that regime forces captured a foreign tanker with a crew of 12 accused of smuggling. The seizure comes amid heightened tensions between the U.S. and Iran amid the breakdown of the nuclear deal that led to the regime to exceed the threshold of low enriched uranium, uh, uranium. Where am I getting these words from? Uranium stockpile <laughs> as agreed upon in the 2015 accord. Can you imagine if I was running for president? They'd have all these clips of everything I can't say. <laughs> president Trump threatened Iran, Iran with military action last month after it shot down an unmanned drone. Trump initially ordered a strike but called it off. At the last moment, earlier this month, five Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard uh, Corps uh, gunboats tried to seize a British oil tanker in the Strait of Hormuz, but backed off after a British warship approached a senior U.S. official, told Fox News. The U.S. also suspects the regime was behind the recent disappearance of the UAE-based tanker traveling through the Strait of Hormuz. The tanker stopped transmitting its location over two days ago after drifting into Iranian water. So you look at this, you see these articles, U.S. Intel, UAE oil tanker uh, could have been forced into the Iranian waters that Iran says uh, may have drifted in there. A dramatic moment, Iran seizes Brit oil tanker as balaclava-clad commandos of sail, or whatever that word is, onto deck from helicopter in the Gulf. Uh, Iran admits seizure of foreign tanker, 12 crew members, in Strait of Hormuz. It's getting ugly. UK warns robust response coming if Iran doesn't release tanker as U.S. jets fly over the Gulf. Is a new U.S.-led war looming with Iran? Trump says the U.S. destroyed Iranian drone approaching America, American assault ship. That was just the other day. So we're looking at these things. They're ugly. Israeli minister boasts his country has been killing Iranians. You look at this, this thing is going to explode. Ezekiel chapter 38 is very clear. There's a war that's coming with uh, Russia and Iran and Turkey that's going to come against Israel in the last days. The Bible is very clear. In the latter days, after the Jews are back in the land, they're established in the land, they have the Golan Heights, the time when they have Jerusalem, and they're going to come and they're going to make war against Israel. They're going to end up failing because God is going to intervene, uh, Ezekiel chapter 39. And God is going to get the glory. But also there's another war that I believe happens before that. And I believe it's probably connected with Iran because in Isaiah chapter 17, Damascus is destroyed in one night by what appears to be uh, the uh, Israeli Defense Force or the IAF, the Israeli Air Force, uh, where, where Damascus is destroyed. You look at Syria right now. Uh, Syria doesn't exist as the nation that it once did. It's, you got Russia in there, Iran in there. They're predominantly there. They're on the border of, of just north of the northern border of Israel. You look at it and you go, listen, I was just there a month ago. And you're standing there at Mount Bental at the Golan Heights. And you're looking down and there's Syria. There's the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. And you're looking and there's the Russian troops out there off in the distance. And you know it. You're going, this stuff is just nuts. But yet the Bible said, was going to be this way. The other thing that I find amazing is throughout the history of the Bible, the relationship that God, that the Jews had with Iran or Persia is how they're known in the Bible, was always favorable. Persia was always favorable to the Jews throughout the history of the Jews until the last days. And God says, in the last days, they're going to turn against you. And that is exactly what is happening right now. A remarkable days that we live in, but frightening days too. Uh, then we have the increase of anti-Semitism. We're almost done. Um, look at this. Uh, Israel warned, lift siege or we'll kill every Jew on earth. Seven million Palestinians worldwide are awaiting green light to explode. It's this constant threat. The threat against the Jews comes from everywhere. You know that? It's coming from everywhere. It comes from the media. It comes, it's coming from uh, uh, Hamas over in 
in, a, in Israel saying, uh, all over the world we want the Palestinians to revolt against the Jews. It comes from the church. You know that? There are many that are involved in Christian churches that teach that, uh, that just teach the, the um, replacement theology. Uh, the Jews don't belong in Israel. The Jews, there's no covenant with the Jews and so forth. And it feeds anti-Semitism. And uh, you, you start looking at the history of the Jewish people. My friend Olivier Melnick and I, uh, we made a documentary. Olivier is Jewish. It's a great documentary about anti-Semitism. And in it, I learned a lot. He walks you back. He walked me back all the way back to the beginning of the church, the very first church, even before the apostle John was dead, anti-Semitism had already crept into the church. Did you know that? That's just crazy. So you have anti-Semitism, then you have this Muslim man who killed Jewish neighbor while screaming Allah Akbar, not criminally responsible because he smoked marijuana beforehand, judge rules. This is in France, right? There's many people in France that are saying, man, this is not working out for us, and they are fleeing France. What's happening in Europe is unbelievable, but it is happening, the anti-Semitism. But I'm telling you, anti-Semitism is increasing here in the United States too. And uh, it's, it's, an, it's another sign, but so is this. Not just anti-Semitism, but anti-Zionism. Here's what the Bible tells us. Zechariah chapter 12, that in the last days all the world will be gathered against Jerusalem. Zionism. So in the last days, the hatred of the Jews will increase to not just be anti-Semitism everywhere that the Jews go throughout the world. You ever see Fiddler on the Roof? Anybody? How many of you have never seen it? You need to see it. Fiddler on the Roof, that's my favorite movie. Man, I got to see the play not too long ago in L.A. It's great. But it's... Uh, you know, it's the, the Russian pogrom, the persecution against the Jews. That's what the setting is. But you see anti-Semitism, it is all over the world. And according to the Bible, it's only going to increase. And listen, it didn't go away after Hitler was done. In fact, it was horrible even after Hitler was done, still going on in Europe, even in the United States. And, uh, but but um, it's going to increase in the last days to anti-Zionism. We know this because all the world's going to gather against Jerusalem and people are now saying it's not just the end of the Jews, it's the end of the Jews in the land of Israel. And they don't have it. God says not so, but the people are saying it. Uh, Ilan Omar. <laughs> I knew that would give some smile. <laughs> Omar <laughs> introduces resolution defending boycott of Israel, likens it to boycotts of Nazi Germany, Germany and the Soviet Union. I'm thinking, wait a minute. Wasn't it the Jews who suffered at the hands of Nazi Germany? And you look at how it's twisted. Isn't that unbelievable? How it's taken and just turned back on the Jews. The very thing that happened to them. And now they're being accused of being the Nazis. Listen, I, I've been to Israel many times, and I'm going again. And what you hear coming out of Washington sometimes, and on the news media in the Western world, is a lie. It's not anything like what we are hearing. It's appalling, and what the Bible does say is Zion is the Lord's, and the enemy of your soul hates that because he knows the Lord is going to come and rule and reign from Zion, and he wants to stop that, and God says, if you can eliminate my Jewish people, which you won't be able to do, you will never be able to eliminate them. I have a covenant with the sun and the moon and all of the sky, and so I have a covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and my people forever and i have given them the land and they will be there and the lord is going to return and the jew will still be alive that much i know no matter how much hatred is spewed out of the world and even out of even out of washington but I look at this you know what she needs she needs prayer so she needs to so pray for her ex cnn commentator at progressive summit major news outlets are zionist orgs i'm almost done because i want to get to the to the last Two things. Five more minutes. Five more minutes? Okay. So, uh, former CNN commentator Mark Lamont Hill claimed that news outlets like NBC and ABC were Zionist organizations that produced Zionist content during a panel on Friday at the annual Netroots Nation a Summit held by progressive activists in Philadelphia. Um, the summit describes itself as the largest annual conference for progressive and has long been a stop for uh, Democratic presidential hopefuls, including this year. 
Hill's comments came less than a year after he lost his CNN perch after calling for a free Palestine from the river to the sea. Uh, you know that, that song? Uh, you, you, how many of you heard that? Free Palestine from the river to the sea. How many of you heard that? Few, not very many. It's, in other words, you're saying, kill all the Jews. Free the land of Palestine. Um, by the way, let me just harp on this for a minute, because you gave me five minutes, I'll take six. <laughs> in my Bible, I have this map. It says Palestine in the time of Christ. That's a lie. Uh, <laughs> the name Palestine didn't come about until 135 A.D. at the hand of Adri uh, Hadrian. And uh, so I, I look at it and I go, okay, at the time of Christ, it was Judah. It was the land of Israel. It was, it was the land of Judah. Uh, you hear all the time, well, Jesus was a poor Palestinian. What a bunch of garbage this was. It is propag it's spin, it's a narrative, and people buy into this stuff. And you look at it and you go, man, the, the, the stuff is just absolutely unbelievable. But this free Palestine from the river to the sea, that's from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. In other words, uh, push all the Jews into the sea. Get rid of all of them. Anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism. Uh, then we have Daniel's covenant or the peace covenant. Um, this says ministerial uh, to promote a future of peace and security in the Middle East. That's Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law. Uh, I find this interesting because he's standing in front of this sign, uh, peace and security in the Middle East. Um, the Apostle Paul tells us uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, when they say peace and security, look out, then sudden destruction. And this is plastered everywhere, peace and security in the Middle East. I'm not saying Jared Kushner is the Antichrist. I'm not saying Trump is the Antichrist. But there's a peace plan that's coming. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel's covenant. Daniel chapter 9. There's a seven-year covenant that is going to be confirmed uh, with the leaders of the nation of Israel. The day is coming. It's going to happen. It's going to last for seven years. It'll be broken at the midpoint of the tribulation by uh, the Antichrist who enters into the covenant. But uh, the thing about this, this peace covenant, when I look at this, Concerning President Trump's uh, deal of the century, his special envoy, Jason Greenblatt, said, we are aiming for a home run. Um, this thing got shot down recently by um, the uh, PA, Palestinian Authority, um, because they said we're not going to accept it, even though I think $50 billion uh, 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 dollars was on the table to benefit the Palestinians. They said, ah, we're, we're just going to reject it. Um, but it seems like it might be changing. President Trump believes the peace negotiations have gone on long enough and it is time for a comprehensive final peace treaty in the Middle East. God is the only one that knows what is going to happen, but it should be noted that the rebellious Palestinian leadership is not so rebellious after all. Three things have spurred them to try to reestablish their relationship with Trump. Number one, Trump cut off U.S. financial aid and the PA is hurting financially. Number two, says Damon Duck, the PA has decided that President Trump will get reelected and they want to smooth things over with him. Number three, PA efforts to get all of the Arab nations to boycott Jared Kushner's Bahrain conference was ignored by many of the Arab leaders. And you're looking at this and the tide is turning. What's happening over there is well, you have Saudi Arabia, you have Egypt, you have Jordan. They are tired of this card being played. They realize, listen, the problem is you guys are over there saying it's all Israel, Israelis' fault, the Jews' fault, and it's not. You've had offer after offer after offer for peace. You refuse to accept it. Now you have this incredible deal from Trump. You refuse to accept it. We got a bigger problem. We got Iran that's threatening to wipe us all off. You guys are in bed with Iran. We're done with this whole thing. And they're saying we're not going to listen to you, to you guys anymore. And so they're starting to realize, well, we don't have the favor that we used to have. So you see how all of these things are playing into, hence, another sign, big sign, a very big sign, the peace covenant, the abomination of desolation it will eventually lead to that, that Jesus spoke of. And this is the last thing. It's the third temple uh, that is to be um, built. Um, uh, we know there's a temple coming. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 tells us that there's a temple that's coming. Revelation chapter 11 teaches us that there is a temple coming. Look at this. It's just a Google search today. Will new Israeli government begin building third temple? 
That was in April, uh, just a few months back. Zehud Faglin says he wants to build Third Temple right away. The next one, potential kingmaker in Israel's election offers uh, a package, goes on to the temple. Israeli Third Temple party gains traction. A synagogue on the Temple Mount? That's a question. Israeli election surprises can lead to the temple miracle, says the last one. And then here, there's, here's this. Two small political parties that ran in Israel's April 6, 2019 election failed to get enough votes to be included in the Israeli government. Prime Minister Netanyahu won the election, but he couldn't get enough support to form a new government. So he scheduled another vote those two small political parties have decided to merge and run as one party in the September election. One of their main issues, September, that's just two months away, one of their main issues will be to rebuild the temple. They believe their merger and support for rebuilding the temple will, be easily, uh, will easily give them enough votes to participate in the next Israeli government. So I look at these things and I think, man, this is only, I don't even know how many of this, one, two, three, four, nine? That's only nine. And you look and you start looking at all of the different signs that are pointing to the coming of the Lord. It's just a reminder that you better be ready. Uh, Jesus is coming. Uh, listen, I know we got a barbecue going on out there because Harry said we do, but there's something much more important. It's whether or not you know the Lord, whether or not you're ready. And uh, listen, this is what I want to do. If, uh, we're, I'm going to let you go because I went long and you guys were very, very patient with me. But... If you want to know that you're ready, come on up and see me or one of the other brothers and sisters. We'll be down here to answer questions, pray with you. All of these things Jesus told us so we would look up. Luke chapter 21, when you see these things begin to take place, look up, your redemption draws near. He wants us to be ready. Are you ready? If you don't know, please come down, see me. Let's see somebody else that's down here. We'd love to pray with you, answer your questions uh, before you leave. Other than that, I'm going to pray and you can go if you want to go, have a burger or whatever. Lord, we thank you for your word and your ministering. Uh, you are good to us, and I thank you. You give us the prophetic word, even as Amos wrote. You, you tell us what's coming. You don't do it unless you tell us what's coming. You tell us what's coming. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, good night. The band wants to play, but you are free to go. Like I said, I went rather long. If you